Hi folks, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do. I've um, packed my watercolour stuff away because <coughs> tomorrow I'm doing a charity show with, with uh, other creators in the local church, the native charity. Uh, so it's uh, back to oils. And I've uh, <coughs> I've been keeping my oil, I thought I had some oil paints in here, but I didn't. So that the, this grease, grease proof piece of paper here with the with the uh, residue of any oil paint I might leave after doing this little one will go back in here. I'll have to give it a bit of a, it's a bit damp, but I'll have to give it a dry before I do. All right, now I've got the acrylics in the smaller stable palette and my watercolours in a Ziploc bag on a piece of wet toweling. It's just a piece of watercolour paper, seven and a half inches by um, 11. It's a bit of um, Fabriano 130 pounds. Not that it makes any difference. Uh, you can paint straight onto it if you wish with acrylic or oil. <coughs> um, what I've done with this, I've just given both sides a coat of, uh, of PVA glue, dil slightly diluted PVA glue. I can't tell you how much it's to dilute it because it varies with the uh, viscosity of the stuff you buy, it varies. You have to use your own judgment. But if it's too thin, it won't work. But that seal of the surface is both sides made of plastic coating, which it's PVA glue is. When it dries, in a, if you put it in a pot like that, or something like that, and leave it to, put, this is uh, alkyd resin and linseed oil, refined linseed oil, because I'm doing an oil painting. But I've got several of those lids and you let the PVA glue dry in that overnight until it is dry you'll have to scrape it off with a palette knife and it'll pull off as a sheet of plastic <coughs> oh excuse me uh i've but i've added a bit with the while this was wet here i added a bit of chalk powdered chalk just to get a bit more tooth so as far as i know as concerned it's it's not porous the paint will stay on the surface, but if you want to paint straight into it, I'm going to just, sorry, move my legs and my tri or oh, my thing out of the way. All right, okay, you can see all those. Uh, there we go. Uh, but you can paint straight into it with oil, but you'll find that the oil disappear or will stain the paper, but it will go, it will dry into the paper. And you will lose more, use more paint. Same with acrylic, but you can do it. it. It won't hurt. But I wouldn't recommend it with this type of paper because this is only a third, thirty odd percent linen. The rest is cellulose, so I don't suppose it'll be permanent. But proper watercolor paper, the the uh, the artist quality, whether it's ninety pounds, one hundred and forty pounds, doesn't matter. That is 100% linen rag and, and that will stand the test of time. It's very dull now, it's very cloudy, it's very rainy. I've not put any artificial light on here because if I do, it probably, I think it makes the, uh, the, the film go a little bit darker than usual. So I'm hoping it's going to reproduce what I'm looking at in here. So what am I going to paint? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'll get some brushes I had prepared because I've been sorting out my watercolours. I want to try to do, do this with a with, with flat brush and I'll use that bit of old toweling. I've had this brush for years, it's split laterally but when I've got when it's wet it'll come to some sort of edge. Uh, I'm going to paint, I think of a rural sort of scene, a meadow sort of scene, so I love meadows. They all, it doesn't matter how many you do, they all end up different. Um, one they did loads of haystacks, didn't they? Loads of wrong cathedral, cathedral. Oh, that cloth's a bit damp, so I won't use, I'll use that one. Right, okay, so let's put in, let's, let's start with a bit of, uh, bit of stuff, bit of stuff on here, bit, bit of, uh, bit of background foliage. So a bit of, bit of medium, and we'll have, I'll have blue, I haven't got any black out here. A burnt sienna, a bit of cad yellow, a bit of red, plenty of oh, sort of cad light. Now we've got a lovely 
mix of colour there, look. We can, we can alter that. But I, I, I've been trying to go uh, more impressionist, and it's surprisingly difficult when you're used to working on things that are from photographs. For example, you tend to be too literal. I'll bring that one down. A bit of oil. Let's bring that down here. I'll put that one in there. A bit of blue in there, I think. A bit of white. In that blue, it's just ordinary ultramarine. I'm not sure where I'm going, but but I'll just uh, just make it up as I go along. I love that colour. That's burnt sienna and ultramarine with those other colours mixed in. But for a lovely green, just try this: ultramarine, burnt sienna. This is Winsor and Newton burnt sienna, and and the, and the yellow. More yellow. You get a lovely, rich, deep green, and you can lighten that with the Cajello. Put some air in. I've got to put the sky in yet. I've made a bit of a mess of that one. Maybe change that. Put that in the light. Right, we'll see where we go with that. Put in a bit of uh, meadow now. That's all going to be changed. This is just the first bit of it. So let's have some, some of that yellow. And we'll just pull that in. Slur it all. Don't even think I've got the, the mount that I use to show the size is in my bag, my big bag, ready to go later. That's what tomorrow. Yeah, let's go back there. Okay. Bit of white. Uh, let's get, get something like that in there. Bit of, I'll use a bit of Viridian. Why not? Viridian's a great, great shortcut. Mix a bit of Viridian with it, it uh, turns a sort of an olivey sort of green. Probably made probably make the trees too heavy, but right, a bit of shadow colour in that left hand tree. Who knows what this is going to end up with? All right. I want this abstract. I don't want it to be representational. I want it to suggest things rather than say I'm a tree, where you know immediately that's a tree. Um, now I want to just clean the brush. I'm not cleaning the brush brushes in spirit or in in a solvent till I finish because you get on my chest. Right, okay, now a bit of, now we want quite an undramatic sky, I think. A bit of red, a bit of yellow, a bit of medium. It will take a bit, a bit of the paint that's already in the brush. Out. A bit of ochre, let's put it all in. I'll change the shape of that tree, that, that mass of foliage. So I won't be painting for you tomorrow as I would normally. I did sell one last year. Nothing says I can't sell a painting. Red. 
per il pennello per voi in giro Keep that out of the sky. That kind of. All right, getting somewhere now. Medium. So I didn't think about this. I just went straight in. No planning. The planning comes afterwards, right now. I'll put the, well, try to put the trees back again in that. Bit of oak in there. Right, bit, bit of a bit of mauve in there. Just ultramarine and cadmium red. They're mixing these colours from the trees in the sky has uh, made it quite difficult to paint over for the moment anyway. Oh. Go back over that in a minute. Got a bit of movement in there. Okay, that. No cloud under there, a bit of movement. Clean the brush and start to work on these trees now. Uh, let's get that viridian and a bit of a bit of ochre. And we'll Oh, we've got that shadow in there. Some in here. Okay, that'll do for a minute. That, those colours in. Shadow. Right, work on that foreground a bit while well, that just goes a little bit tacky with the fast drying oil. Ah. Slabby. But as I say, that ochre mixes very well with the Viridian, tames it a little bit. That's a bit of light. I would imagine a lot of going to be a lot of criticism for this one if it sees the light of day. And 
Never know this. Not like the usual horse colour, is it? Put on that uh, tree there. Look at that. Yeah, that's a bit of food here. I love it yellow. Gets a little bit of light in there. A bit more shadow in there. Right, there's also that shape of the tree on the top. Ah, quite hard with this brush, it might be better, would be better. I'm going to get a, a long flat, this is a short one. There might be a little bit more blue in there. Right, now we'll open that up a little bit. I wouldn't have thought there could be a lot of paint left on my palette. Right. That is not quite as slabby as I hoped it would be, but then I'm not really used to painting like that. But I think it's an experiment for me, really. I don't dislike it. Cubist. A bit of cubist and a bit of light coming through there. I'll just get that the vocal there. A bit of white. Light coming through. Now, a bit of that sky. A bit of slabbiness there. A little bit of the white and a bit of ochre. No medium on this. Okay, that's all I really want to do with that. I'm going to find a find out. I'll, I'll put, uh, well, let's I just put a, need a bit, a bit of shadowy green in there, don't we? All right, okay, that'll do. I'll put that in my box and I hope it'll stay dry for the next painting. Be careful when I get my trousers or my jeans. Oh, I was going to bear with me while I make a mess. I'll try that out for me. I have, I'll show you my box here. My, ah, here's my stay wet palette. What's left there? That's the box. The lid is a big red lid. It's the Masterson Premier. I've had this for 25 years. Fabulous, durable, brilliant box when you see it. I use the base of it for a palette. 
if it really is, why let's uh, back that in. Put this on. Perfect. Do you like my setup with the uh, with the pallet on the side, on one side. There's a limit to the size I can do though. Where you can see it all. I can't do it with watercolours because I, I like to um, hold my watercolour palette. Uh, right, well there we are. There's a, a simple abstract uh, meadow, abstract meadow we'll call that. I think if I can see if I can find a, a, a small mount. Talking about experiments, I'll show you one based on a, an Arthur Madison. Well, there it is. Put that there. Let's just move my camera over and take it up a bit. Uh, right. There we are. Oh, I quite like that. I think that's a nice little abstract. That's what it is. I've, I, but I, 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 it's just probably a bit too abstract. But you know what, what it is. You know, it's a sky trees and a foreground. Um, but I'll show you this. Yeah, I'm sure I've shown it to you before. But I'll have to. Um, uh, that won't hurt me. Just take that up. I love Arthur Madison, and if you get a chance, to, well, you can see him on Google. He's got a gallery there. Someone's got a gallery up of his the wonderful work. There we are. It's a, now, when I started to go abstract, I was looking at, in particular, Arthur Madison. He got a great influence on me at some stage in my early life. It's just, uh, I need to come out a bit more, so let's just move that back and we'll move this up to there and we'll, we'll talk through it. Well, there it is. I've never put it up for sale because it's probably a bit too much like Arthur, but he's a fantastic artist. He's about my age now. It's an oil painter, so I put a, a pinch of cyclist from him, but he did, he, he painted a sort of, well, he sort of took Monet and just moved it on. There's lots of um, emerald greens, cerulean, blue, viridian, cadmium yellow pale, light, ultramarine. Look, no, you can see the uh, cerulean in the sky with the... Well, so I, I did lean very heavily on Arthur for this one. Uh, but I don't suppose I'll ever sell it anyway. It's, uh, I like it. It was hours and hours and hours of painstaking work with this. This wasn't done in 40 minutes. But uh, just the cyclist coming home, the old farmer, been out in the fields, fields all day, coming home for his tea. Uh, I hope you like that one. Probably one of the best I've ever done, but... And, and I go from that over 20 years to... to that. Ah, not quite to that. Anyway, nobody knows. There we are. For, for Martha Madison type work, Monet Impressionist, highly Impressionist, to a, an abstract which is totally original. You saw me make it up, but whether it's got any merit, time will tell. But I like it. Hope you do too. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Going, going, gone.